So um, we're going to continue our programming language. I've decided to implement a virtual CPU uh, as an execution uh, construct for our uh, language because it's cool. Uh, I already did something but we're just going to uh, throw that away um, and just start over. So we need a package, we're still in the package boogie. Um, if you're not up to this point it's going to be difficult to explain all of it so you might have to go back a few videos but um, this is actually going to be something that stands completely on its own so you we can run this at the end of the video so uh, what I want is a, a set of opcodes um, we can also call those instructions but for now I'll call those opcodes but I'm kind of using opcode and instruction uh, interchangeably here um, so I'm making some uh, some custom uh, types, uh, just that things are easier to work with. And then uh, I make those enums. Hi, Boogie. Uh, whenever I start making a video and speaking, uh, Boogie comes and uh, messes with the video. Uh, he's my dog. Uh, so all I need right now is a halt instruction, but just for uh, future sake, I'll show you where we are going. It will have a, a load instruction, an add instruction, subtract instruction, uh, multiply instruction, and divide instruction. Um, but for now, we'll only deal with halt. So we're literally gonna make a CPU that just stops. But even that is already um, quite something. Because that's the basis where it all stands on. And now we'll define some registers, because this will be a register-based machine. Um, so IOTA. And then we can start counting values upwards. So I'll make two registers, we're not going to use them right now. Then I make my actual CPU uh, struct. And I give that a, uh, a field called uh, memory. Uh, which is a uh, list of opcodes. And I will give it a program counter, which is just an int. And that will move our uh, well, program counter around. I uh, will uh, make a new constructor, new CPU. We'll pass it nothing, return the pointer to the CPU. Uh, then we'll set it up like this. Uh, we have to make our memory. So allocate. Um, the start and then just let it grow dynamically for now uh, and then um, I'm gonna insert a little program into our memory um, so think of this program as um, beyond the parser right so we have our high level language uh, and then we have our lexer and we have our parser we've seen all that stuff and now from the parser on we will kind of compile it into our own little mini assembly language so um, uh, I have that memory to store my program memory and uh, I want to add to that so I'm appending to uh, my CPU memory the uh, halt opcode or instruction and then I can return uh, the CPU so now I need a, a run function for that uh, CPU uh, CPU run uh, very simple just an infinite for loop uh, and we're going to switch on uh, CPU next instruction keep that in mind for a second because that method doesn't exist yet but we will do that once we fill out this uh, this case statement so halt, obviously, uh, we've, we've created that. We can uh, make a little debug uh, message here and say uh, halt, right? Uh, and then we can actually, we can return out of the function because we, we're halting, so. Uh, and that's really all that we need to do to make our CPU work. The only thing is we need to actually get um, uh, our next instruction and for that I just made a, a sort of a um, little hacky method before we start like implementing the full program counter and the jumping uh, we can just make this little helper method 
that we can expand later which uh, returns an opcode and at the moment it just basically does return cpu uh, mem0 so that should be all we need for uh, making a cpu that actually cycles and runs an instruction from memory uh, let's have a quick look at our main uh, yeah so I did still have this so I commented out all of the work that we've done before in our Golang implementation of the boogie programming language all of that stuff still works but now it needs to be tied together again into this new element which is the CPU and the CPU is just you create an instance of it and then you just say run and um, obviously at some point we're going to actually pass memory to this constructor here that comes out of uh, the uh, compiler um, so the evaluator will go the parser will stay that hands off to the compiler and then it goes into the cpu as a uh, set of instructions um, which as you know, you know like after that step it should be really fast um, uh, for something that is built this way so now if you run it go run main.go we see that it actually prints halt so just one more time to to jump through that what just happened here is uh, we created a new CPU, uh, we gave it some memory, and then in that memory we, we, we appended one instruction, which was the halt instruction. Then we called run, it started the for loop, it said switch on the next instruction, next instruction gave us the first item in memory, which happens to be HLT, halt. So in that case, it prints the halt and then returns. And that is a, a really simple um, CPU. Um, I will put probably some card in the beginning of the video because this time I forgot to actually say it, but um, a lot of this work is based on a, a YouTube channel called Philip Bohun. He's been making um, like how to build your own virtual machines, uh, how to build a register-based CPU. And he is now working on something he calls Corgi 64, which as far as I understand it is a 64-bit a simple virtual machine programming language um, it could actually be an entire uh, sort of emulated computer but um, I haven't gone that far uh, obviously I am making it my own uh, I'm not just um, taking his concepts one by one I, I, I do see a few things that I would like to do different so but if you're really interested in a project that is uh, much further along uh, go and have a look at Philip Bohun I will uh, link in the description and have a look uh, on his channel because he's super chill and really uh, good at what he does and I really enjoy watching his content. So that's it for now and I hope to see you next time.